Welcome to Kingdom Finances. We pray that this program will bring hope into your life today. It's a privilege to have with us Dr. Eric Hoon. Uh, welcome today. Well, Francois, thank you. Uh, they call you doctor. You did your doctorate in what? I did my doctorate in uh, Christian counseling. So okay. I did it with my master's as well, but uh, actually my doctorate is in Christian counseling. Okay. And you did some practical work with that? Yeah, what I did is I was in Bloemfontein as a, at a school as a student counselor. Okay. When I did some hours here for a year and a couple of months, which was an extreme, extreme important part of my life because there I've actually learned how to work with people outside the realm of only Christianity. Okay, for that's very important. Open, yeah, that's very important because what happened there is you worked with not only social services, social development, social of the person itself or the kids himself. It was very important that you learn how they feel and how they actually experience school life and getting ready for going out after school and become adults. And the stress and the trauma and all the experiences that's actually going to go with that to get them ready for it was an experience for me myself. It was a learning curve for me very much. So when you say that, do you also mean that there's many young people that's living on the streets and we don't even know it? That's correct, yes. We're also working in Cape Town as well with a school in uh, Kailicha uh, f as, as, a, as a beneficiary. We actually go out and help these kids because they are in such extreme stresses at the moment, especially after COVID. That is not only the virus issue, but also the social uh, distancing, the social development of themselves in that area that is very, very uh, difficult for them to, to come by. Sure. And also with everything though that with while we were doing that at, in Bloemfontein, I started with a school program for uh, addiction, for substance addiction. And we worked with school kids at the school. And I took that on for, from there onwards. And we're actually doing it at the school as well. And it actually helped. It, it was such a big success in uh, last year until the COVID uh, pandemic started that out of 55 kids that we started with, actually, I think it's about 35 were clean after a year, Whoa, not using anything that's anymore. Awesome. And we would like to continue with that, but unfortunately with the lockdown, everything is not going to be yes. possible at the moment. Yes, I don't think everybody knows with the, the schools, the situation in many schools with abuse, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, uh, addiction. That's correct. How big yeah. it is. It is massive. It's actually so big that out of the uh, grade 10s up to grade 12 uh, children or learners that we had, half of them admitted of using some kind of substance what? every weekend. Sure. Now, you also had a, a rehabilitation center. That's uh, correct, yeah. What did you do there? We, we had a rehabilitation center for women only um, because uh, the, the different needs of different people. Men has got their needs that you've got to work with and then for women you've got their needs because sometimes they come out of an environment where they were abused and they needed these uh, time away in the addiction center to get rid of not only the substance abuse and the addiction towards that but also the abuse that they had to go through while having it from home. And that's what we work with. We work with all, all types of substance abusers and we did uh, uh, process addictions and more addictions that is not normal to the to the people that they don't know about that is more difficult for especially for women for eating disorders and and, and the such so sure. that's what we were doing for a while and today you actually in two areas you are working with and helping out in in trauma areas that's great yeah what we're doing now uh, as of i think for the past three years after i've completed working with uh, in in rehabilitation centers I had a call to start doing trauma, physical emergency trauma, which we are, are called out in on crisis calls where there's immediate need for trauma counseling for if, a person. Can you, can you just tell us trauma like what? Any trauma, uh, suicide, uh, the, the, the family calls out when a suicide has happened uh, to, to assist them at the hospitals, at the homes, car accidents where people are still alive or maybe alive or uh, on their way uh, to hospital that you know that's going to die, we are called out to do the counselling for those people that's mm. still alive or the family members of that and taken through the trauma process so they can understand what's going to happen and how they've got to be treated for this. I think you have to have a calling to do work like this. I think I, it must be very stressful upon yourself or not? It's not really stressful. It is, uh, the, the calling is something that, that helped me to get into houses where I never would have been to speak to people that I've never would have met, to, to be able to bring over the, 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 my Christianity 
without saying a word, without trying to, to, to convince somebody that they must change or anything like that. So when you go in, you don't say, I'm a Christian or a pastor or whatever. You just come in as a, as a counselor. I come in and I say, I'm Eric Horn. I'm a, I'm a, a trauma counselor, trauma support counselor, and I'm here to help you with your struggles and not with anything else. And usually are the people quite open? Everybody that, that I've worked with so far is when once they see somebody like, like me arriving at the scene, they, they, it looks like they are attracted to you because they know that the softness that you're going to give over to them is going to be there. There's no harsh feelings, there's no judgment, there's no judging, there's no judgmental issues about this whole thing. You go there to find out how you can smooth and soften the impact of an... Uh, mm. uh, 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 you know, when you say this, it sounds like you're carrying the heart of Jesus into the real world outside there. Uh, I think, I think if anybody comes into contact with that harsh reality of, of crisis and trauma, and somebody comes, uh, can I just assist you? That that is that is something that we we don't know when we get called out. What we are up to, what where we're going to go to, that is the thing where you have to, and that's a big thing. You have to pray and you have to be prepared for what what is going to be ahead of you, you don't know. But what helps it is, it makes you prepared in yourself and you know that you're not sitting and not trying in yourself to do something, but you know that the Spirit is going to help you through this. And then also the big thing about that is when you arrive at a place, is that those people don't know what has happened. They don't understand it and you have to change their thinking and their mindset to something like, that is final, this is life, this is how it works. But we don't have to just forget things. We can we are afforded the time to go through the grieving part of, of, of something that happened. But we also realize that it's not only death. There's many things that, that happens. There's, there's attempted suicide. It's even, even, even worse to work with, with people that for a serious uh, or a, a actual suicide that was committed. Uh, rape. There's a lot of rape cases. And yes, they say that women don't want to talk to men after that. That's not really true. There is sometimes people that say, I want to work, talk to a, a female counselor, but I have had a couple of rape counsel, uh, counseling sessions with females that opened up because they trust the spirit that's in you, not the mm. person that's in you, because they know where they are. I'm working for, for this company for, for two years now, and as, on, on a, on a call-out basis, uh, when I don't have my own clients, um, or busy with my own clients, which we do the same. They can we can have them there for that trauma counselling because that's a once off. That's that's important. That's a debriefing. The most important thing is there to settle them, to ground them, to contain them. If something else has happened, then we refer to, to to other professionals. That's the biggest thing, and then we take it from there. And then afterwards, if they want to come back and they want to do personal sessions, we can do our personal sessions in our rooms where we we have space for people. Sure. Like I think the the kind of work that you are doing is so necessary. Especially in a time like this, I've heard about uh, when, when everything closed down worldwide, I heard the percentage of people under stress mm. and, and, and hopelessness. And, That's right. And, and who do they go to? So See, that is where the, where the trauma counselors are very important, especially through after this COVID pandemic of lockdown, isolation. Uh, a lot of people wanted to be isolated, but they didn't realize what the isolation is going to do to them socially and what they're going to do to them mentally. And that is coming out now, especially with the students that's got to write exams now. There's a lot of changes that happened, not only in the lockdown that they had to stay away from people and loved ones, they also had to change their way of studying, it's going to virtual, going to online, going to not that's seeing, true. not having contact sessions. So it made them very difficult for everything. And they didn't realize when they handed in a project, whether the project was 100%, because they didn't get the feedback immediately. They mm. had to read that. So yes. there's a lot of students, especially out the uh, matrix, uh, university students, technical uh, students, that are struggling at the moment to make peace with what has happened and not knowing whether they're going to be able to make the exams, which is starting in a couple of, couple of days' time. And that is where our biggest call on us at the moment is for those young people to understand that we are there, we, we can help you, we can take you through it, we can we can ground you, we can su support you, and we can also refer you to somebody that if you do an, uh, a medical assistance that we know who to send you to and help you to get to that, that treatment. If you are listening and you're one of those young people, um, we will put Dr. Eric's, Eric's details on the screen so that you can t contact him. Um, and if you experience any kind of trauma in your life or you're in a situation that you know you desperately need somebody, make contact. This might be the reason 
that you are looking at this program mm. today. Mm. Uh, Dr. Eric, and then uh, you've got your own practice? That's correct. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 what, do, what do you do there? We, we do the same. We, we do a, a, a program called Traumatic uh, Incident Reduction, where we actually work that with people. That sounds very difficult. What it's is that? It's very mean? difficult. It's a metapsychology uh, theory, which we use. And I want do to you say always something. use these big words, metapsychology? Yes, I need to. I need to, because I have to convince <laughs> the people that we know what we're talking about, and they can come to us. Yes. It's actually a very interesting thing. It is, um, we, 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 we try to not use old techniques to get people to understand where their trauma lies. That's we good. need to go back in time to find out where the initial trauma started and we work from there onwards. And that is what uh, TIR means. Okay. Now, TIR is, is, is really new in South Africa. I think it's been for the past five years. There's not many of us that's doing it. It's huge in, in the UK and overseas in Europe. But in South Africa, we're just a couple of people where they can actually have a look at it. We are registered. So we, it's not somebody who just can't, can do it. We have to do the course. We have to be registered internationally. And then also what we do is we, we work together as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a company, but each one works on its own. So we've got a, a, a me, I'm, I'm a counselor doing this uh, traumatic event. And we've got uh, a, a nursing sister that's a uh, psychology sister, sister in psychology. And she does assessments and CBT and those kind of things. You don't know CBT, another big word for you. It's cognitive <laughs> behavioral therapy, which is actually almost the same as what we do as preachers. We change the cognitive thinking of people that's to true. think in a different way. And that's why I believe that we as, as uh, Christians and the medical scene must actually work together. We mustn't work against each other because that way we can get way further than we can do. And we understand that things are different in certain ways, but most of it is almost the same. And that's why I trust that we do trauma in a different way, is we're using that medical uh, parts that we've, we've learned. We've learned how to use the, the psychology of, uh, of the world, but also to bring in the kindness and the grace and the beautiful love of Jesus into this world, and then we give it for free to people. And I think that's how the church should be. Excellent. So you're sitting in Cape Town area, but now somebody is listening in Gauteng, and they want to contact you, are you available? There's so many platforms, Zoom and WhatsApp yes. and whatever. Are you available for we people? We do telephone, we have the telephonic <coughs> conversations, counseling sessions. We do virtual, which is via, via any of the platforms that you just mentioned. And we can always, uh, if need to be, we can go to corporates and go and sit with corporates and say, listen, we're here. Yeah. You've got people that's got problems, especially after retrenching or while retrenching or all these new things that's coming through, the people working from home. They don't know when they're actually at home and when they're working because they're at home working. And so these people are getting confused. They're isolated more than, than the people that are allowed to go out. So we can go to your homes as well. We do do traveling in, in the Cape, but if it's you're further away, we can arrange that we can send one of the team to, to, to go and see you. But that is unfortunately, there's a lot of costs involved in that. But we also work with a network of people outside of Cape Town that we trust that does the same as us. And we can refer you to somebody like that. I can hear somebody saying that, but I don't want anybody to know what I'm going to tell you. Mm. I need you, I, I need your, your expertise, but for me at this stage to, to come to you, will it be, be confidential? Everything is confidential. We are more confidential than I think the world out there knows that how we are. We are strictly controlled by the ethics of all medical professionals. We are a professional, registered professional bodies as well. And we do keep our information very, very confidential. We do not allow anybody to talk outside the group of uh, therapists that needs to do this, this therapy. But then also, if information needs to be shared, we go through the right processes and uh, protocols, get the information, or get the client or the patient to sign the information, know who's it gonna send to be sent to, who we're gonna get it from, like normal uh, professional doctors and, and uh, other people and we file these things, we keep our records the same as medical records for seven years for the government issues, And but we, we strictly confidential, we do not talk that's, about this. That's very good to know. And <clears throat> if, if somebody is listening now, can, can you give us a, a broad spectrum of what you are covering? Like, do you cover depression? We do. Uh, we uh, do what, depression. Kind of, what kind of... of Cases do you take? Okay, we do depression because certain of this is different ways of depression that you can describe uh, depression. If it is depression that needs medication, we will refer. If you are already a, pers a patient with a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, we will get the, the uh, authority to work with you 
from those people. That's why we need some information. Uh, depression is something that you can think about. This depression can be something that happens before you go to exam. You think yourself into a situation which is a dark space and we will help you to get out of it. Any trauma related uh, thing, any addiction related uh, uh, function. We now, if will you talk about the, uh, addiction, are you only talking about substance abuse or also people that are internet addicted and, and this eating disorders? Addiction is wide. Addiction is very wide. Uh, the last time I've counted, I think there's about 199 plus different what? descriptions of addiction. Where you, addiction is something that you use as a means to survive and not as a means just to live. And that's where the difference come in. And addiction, and I want everybody to understand, addiction is not something that you can just get over with. You have to get the tools to get over it. It doesn't matter whether it's sex, whether it is a porn, whether it is a substance, whether it's alcohol, whether it's over-the-counter medication, you need the tools and we will help you to get those tools. Sometimes we can't do the, the, the counseling for that for, for long periods, but we do. I'm sitting with clients now that I'm busy with for more than two years. After rehabilitation, I've taken them through there and they're still clean and they still want to go. Now, I've sat with quite a few people through my lifetime that really tried to get rid of, say, alcohol abuse or drug abuse or whatever. And every time it, it seems, yes, it's working and, and then it's back to square one and they start all over again. Mm -hmm. And most of the times they're more addicted. I've also seen that people going into rehabilitation centers come out and then they're on the, the hardcore that stuff. That is correct. So yeah. is there really, really a cure for addiction? addiction? There's, there's no cure for addiction. Addiction to go into recovery is a choice. And once you've made the choice, will help you to keep to those choices. We've is got it a possible? Saying, it is possible. We've got a saying that says, one is, one is, one is too many and a thousand is too little. We, we work in the concept of until you use that substance or use, do the action of using something that you're addicted to, then you have lost it. But we'll make sure that you do not get there by means of giving you cognitive therapy so that you can think what you're going to do Look the movie through and see the end of the movie and don't stop at the end of the, of the beginning of the movie. That is it. There's always, there's always help for people. But the big thing is you've got to help yourself. You must be willing to do it. If you don't help yourself, then it's, it's not, not, not going to help you. Dr. Eric, and then the, the cost aspect, you don't have to call out the prices here, but I know that when you send somebody to an addiction center, rehabilitation center, mm -hmm. Uh, it's 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 a lot of money. Not all medical funds will cover that, and, and it's a lot of money. Mm. Um, is what you are offering is it affordable for the normal person on the street? Usually, what we do is we try to get the person when they've already been through to a, a rehabilitation center, which we will help them to get to, to make sure that they first get clean and get the the basics of recovery. Then from there onwards, yes, we. Our, our rates is around about a year. You're going to pay for all the therapies once a week for, for a year for about the same price as one stand into a rehabilitation is going to cost what? you. But That's... then we continue with it and we help you for a year or two with additional therapy. Um, I, I know our time is running out, but if there's somebody listening in, the person that's addicted, that needs the help, isn't there yet, but the family desperately want that person to be helped. What do they do in a situation like they, that? They can contact us and we will do an intervention. We'll come out and we'll have a chat with the people and just explain to them because there's, so, there's such a big stigma towards rehabilitation and drug abuse, but everybody or even any addiction. I mean, you can have an addiction to pizzas. It's, it's possible. You can have addiction to eating. You can I just know, can't yes. stop. <laughs> okay, yeah, that as well. So we, what we need to do is we've got to get the, 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 the client and the family to understand what, is the, what addiction is about so they can understand that it's not something that you can just drop off or build a bridge and get over it. There is no such thing. We'll have to help you through it instead of just judging you over it. That's wonderful. Um, would you mind just to, to speak a word of hope or a word of blessing or a prayer 
because there are so many people out there and I know we entering the festive season we don't know whether we will be locked down or not but um, there's so many people without hope because mm. so many years of hurt and and desperation um, do you have a, a word of encouragement for them yes I've got actually quite a lot I can have a couple of them but the big thing here is just remember that nothing you can do can be fixed but you can be helped to be healed. Whenever you believe in something like that, you will get it, as long as you work for it. But the big thing is you have to ask for help. And we're there to help. That's what we do. We help. Would you mind just to pray for somebody that's in a desperate situation? Okay. Thank you, Lord, that we can sit here today and just praise your name of what you're doing. Thank you for that you are always with us. Thank you that you take our hands, take our knowledge, take our, our souls into places where we usually don't want to go, but you send us and you want us to be there. And because you do that, you've got somebody in mind. And that somebody is sitting there at home looking at this video now and say, that is me. Father, that you can raise them up. Make them understand that there is help for them. There's always help available for them. It's not going to be easy for them. We thank you that you will give them the guidance, give them the love and give them the peace and the grace so that they can call out for this help that is available to them and that they contact somebody that will be get in contact with us. And Father, if they don't have the finances, let them still call, Father. We know that there's always help from your side. You always provide for somebody to be helped out of a situation like this. And we, Father, we thank you that you take us into places where it is sometimes very dangerous. But we thank you, the Father, that you can, that you protect us all the time, that we're still here. While this coronavirus was going on, we were working, but you protected each and one, every one of us. Thank you for all those people that is medical workers out there, that you protect them as well. And Father, we thank you for those people that have suffered the most, that is the people that's addicted to something. While this was going on, it's now time for you to wake up, stand up, and call out and say, here I am, help me, take me further. And Father, we thank you for that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
ek reis kyk kyker, ons is dier die lockdown, dier die pandemie, en uh, ons is nog steeds even spinnen in die pandemie, en verseker sien ons hier by kruis kyk, die repercussie van hierdie pandemie, ons sien dit en voel dit op hierdie oomlik, en ek staan in die week, staan ek in my kamer, en duidelik sien en ek die woorde voor my, jylle het nie, want jylle vraag nie, en ek weet dat die Heere met my daardier gepraat het, om met u te praat, en u te nooi om deel te raak van wat ek nou gaan sê. U weet, ons, ons finansies het te hou gekry, ons gaan nie strijd tegen dit nie, maar ons weet ook dat hier is Godse kanaal. Ek wil u vraag, wil u nie iets oorweeg? Ek en my vrou en my kinders op hierdie stadium maak groot aanpassings in ons eie persoonlijke leven ter wille van Christkijk TV. En ek weet, u geniet Christkijk TV. Ek weet, dit is vir u een groot sien. En ek weet dat u wil nie hee, iets moet gebeur met hierdie kanaal nie. En ek wil vir u verseker, daar gaan niks gebeur met hierdie kanaal nie. Wat ons nou doen en hoe ons nou optree, is net om vir ons die versekering te gee vir die volgende paar maanden. En ek wil u vraag, ons wil project 50 loods. Wat is project 50? Ek vertrouw 50 mense, recht oor Suid-Afrika, net 50 mense, wat vir een jaar lang hulle self kan verbind, net 12 maanden, om een duizend rand te maand te gee. Dis 50 mense recht oor Suid-Afrika, wat bereid is om een duizend rand te maand te gee, net vir 12 maanden. En as jy daar die persoon is, wat sê, Clemens, ons gaan help om dier die pandemie te kom. Ons gaan kruis kyk TV help om dier die repercussie van hier die pandemie te kom. Jy moet verstaan, ons het recht binnen in lockdown, het ons satellietkos is opgegaan met ons jaarlikse verhooging. Ons het geweldig baie bedieners gehad wat gekanseleer het, omdat hulle financieel finansiële druk op hulle bediening het as gevolg van lockdown en kerke wat toe moes maak. Ons het geweldig gesien op hierdie oomlik hoe ons vriende en vernote kanseleer omdat soveel hulle werke verloor het. Raak betrokke by project 50. 50 mense, 1000 rand te maak vir net 12 maanden. En dit gaan ons help om net dier hierdie vallei wat ons in is te kom. En ek weet oor een jaar kyk ons terug en weet, Ebena Eser, tot hiertoe het die Heere ons gehelp. Ek weet, die Heere gaan ons hier nou los nie. Want ek weet, hy gebruik mense soos jy om betrokken te raak. SMS, project 50 na 31575. Project 50 na 31575 of project 50 na 072-890-6634. Project 50 na 072-890-6634. Dankie dat ek weet, jy bid daar oor, en jy help ons om net dier hierdie val uit te kom, en morgen oor morgen staan ons allemaal weer op die top van die berg, en sê werkelijk, die Heere het ons gebring tot hier.